Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit, it's a unique hustle nigga, big shit, 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 King Noah and Toheed. What's yes, going sir. on? Yes, sir. What's going on? That Toheed name throwing me off. I need to know what the heck that is, man. It's Islamic, man. It means one with a law. Okay, okay. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Like that. You know me. Put me up on game. Nigga. I want to know <laughs> sure. what's going on. I don't want to miss nothing, nigga. I'm listening. <laughs> so, man, hey, man, you guys, man, I, like I said, I know y'all both got a heck of a story, man. Backstory, for sure. That's what we always seek for, man. Um, you know, uh, the music and all that. Um, just trying to understand how you guys even got into dealing with this music. You know what I'm saying? And in a time like today's time, with so much hype and everything being on all the social media platforms, you can make yourself look like something that you're not, fake it till you make it, and all that other good stuff. How do you guys uh, plan to be successful in what you're doing? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. We're going to get into it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'd like to take it back. So let's start with Noah first. Okay. I know that you King King Noah sorry. Yeah give me Give him his crown The nigga, <laughs> the nigga say you're king You got to believe him Until he prove you wrong You know what I'm talking about Get a nigga this TN yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know You know when God Come in your life mm-hmm. You know you be reborn again So that first name That's the old you And when you be reborn He always renamed it. You know you get a new name Yeah, yeah. So how old were you When you were reborn uh, 2013 So I was What's this? Twenty twenty nine years. I'm forty two, so it's thirty. What caused you to um, have to realize that? Cause you know, it's always something detrimental. Something serious that usually happens where people grasp uh, to that. Two thousand thirteen, I got I got shot. You know, uh, so I I always knew something was in me because they always told me when I was little that I was a I was anointed. And didn't even know what that word mean at that time. But when I got shot. And uh, when the, the home invasion people, the detectives, then were like, man, your story, testimony, we look at that video camera, we don't know how you still here. So somebody broke in your house? Home invasion. Wow. And you were there by yourself? Uh, Yeah, I was sitting in the living room. Well, actually, I was on my um journey. Uh, I was call it back then, it was, no, it, was, it was on milk. I was just getting called into, like, you know, the Lord and mm-hmm. wanted to understand it because I had, like, a bad breakup so sometimes I feel like having that bad breakup God trying to show me some mm-hmm. remove people around me and so I was I was on the phone with one of my pastors uh, on the Bluetooth and uh, somebody kicked my door in while I'm on the phone what? with the pastor wow. and he was praying yes. with me and so he heard he heard them you know rumbling through the house and asked me where my money at and all that and mm-hmm. he actually called 911 but you know by the time they got there I already got shot Wow, and and, and so crazy. yeah, so so you, you what what made them come in your house was it just random you know because they came in the Bun B house a few years back yeah. what made them come into your house it's some you what you flossing you rolling them on them big bar cars or something you uh, have to tell me the truth I want to know how come they came in your house it's a lot of houses in the neighborhood yeah um you know my problem I ain't gonna say it was a problem I think that's every man uh, I had a love for the women okay and so. Uh, Come to my house. I had a jewelry box about fifteen Rolexes. And yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, I had the money counter sitting on the dresser. Yeah, you know, I seen her. At, she worked at Lowe's, and I came in and spent twenty thousand dollars just on some flows. Uh huh. Mm. And so she set you up. She, I ain't. Gonna, I can't even say she set me up, but like a week after that. When I let her came by the house, and we got like a few days after that. Well, love is blind, my brother. I ain't gonna play. You know what I'm saying? You, you say you ain't gonna say it. I ain't gonna let make you say it. You know, y'all still together? No. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, listen, man. listen. When I say God is good, like He really good because when when the dude shot me, you know, I didn't know where it came from or what you know where it could be. You know, like because I'm always discreet and right and real laid back. I had never ever touched nobody. Never did nothing wrong. I'm always, I'm just that good, that good kid, a good heart. And I kind of figure, okay, 
they wanted the women to do it or they were trying to get the life insurance because I always had like stability, good credit, good uh, good jobs. I always I always been one of the ones that I, mm-hmm. I, I can't tell you what a bad credit score looked like. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I always been one of the ones that yeah. was on point. Yeah, because you had a credit company when you were younger. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was 20 years old, I, had, right. I, I was fixing people credit back in like 1990 right. or something. Right. <laughs> you know yeah, right. I always be, I trips off credit. Yeah. I be feeling like if you got money, you don't need credit. Yeah. So I just feel like you, 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 if you can buy, you can afford it, you get it. If you and can't, you let it go. Both of us I lived that way for a long time because I come yeah. from the streets. Yeah. But I understand yeah. credit is needed as well. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to see the CID? Yeah, yeah. If you know what that, if you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I don't like the IRS. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that department. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just think that you know, like I said, man, coming up. I mean, everybody had a story and hit that bump in the road when you yeah. did. Uh, but without it, you might not be here. You know what I mean? I yeah. I know what I shadowed out without that. I would mean, because I was on my way to hell. Yeah, yeah. I seen it. I, I seen hell. You know, I got shot in the head. So wow. that's what I was about to ask you. Yeah. Where exactly did you get shot? Yeah, I got shot in the head. Did y'all catch the dude that shot you? Um, it was th- two, three dudes. Uh, one uh, got killed robbing a bank like a week later. The other guy, he in prison, and uh, the other guy got killed in a dice game. Yeah. So I, you remember their faces and everything? Yeah, they was broad. They like they didn't care. They they didn't come in to make me to leave to let me live. They came in and actually killed me. Broad daylight cameras there were. How many shots to the head did you get? I got hit one time. They shot twice. They only found one bullet. You know, they came in to do the, you know, tape it off and do that. They only found one bullet. And you were unconscious after that? I was unconscious after that. Well, so I was, I was no. When they hit me, I fell, you know, mm-hmm. but I could hear them and they were like, gone, do them and finish down them. You know, I can right. hear them, but it was some of blood coming, but I, I can hear them. And then when I woke up, I was in the hospital. See, God has a purpose for everything. Yeah. I always say because you're still here, yeah. you have a purpose still. I knew that second bullet. Where, where is it? They you couldn't got, find it in the wall. They couldn't find it anywhere. So I knew right then. And then, like I told you, I had the out of body experience. It, it was a choir. Wow. I seen me walking down the um, the choir. I know I can't sing, so I'm like, "What well, I'm doing in church?" And you know, when I start getting closer to the the word. Someone told me that Lucifer was once an angel. Mm. And he was he worked mm-hmm. he was a choir. Mm-hmm. He was good in the choir. And he said that was him trying to call you on in. And that testimony came to me at the barber shop. I went to like like two weeks later. I you know I was doing my research, paying people trying to find out who was it so I can do what I had to do. And one of my partners that was once a gangster, he got hit nine times, and he told me he said, hey, uh, he got called to ministry like a week, two weeks before that. He was like, man, God said Vince is going to be here. Stop. Don't worry about it. Because I was trying to put whatever I need to find mm-hmm. to catch who I was trying to do, mm-hmm. you know. He was like, man, God said Vince is here. He so I, right. by the time I went to the barber shop to get a haircut, it was a it was a guy, the barber just came there. He only worked there two days. And when I was in the chair going through my cell phone, the dude stopped me and said, hey, you see that picture right there? Stop. He said, barber. He said, man, you see that dungeon right there, that hole? That fire around there, you reach like somebody reaching trying to get up. He said, "Man, that's a pit of hell." That picture, say that picture. And when I zoomed that picture down, that was the, the mark of me getting shot. So when I left that chair, I called mm-hmm. my partner. I said, "Hey, bro, I don't know what's going on with this barbershop, but this dude told me I was on my way to hell. Yeah. He didn't know nothing about me getting shot. <laughs> he don't know nothing." And then like a, a week later, I went there. The, everybody knew what happened in the barbershop. They're like, "Man, that guy ain't been back since. What you do that man? That man ain't been back." <laughs> Wow. You know what I'm saying? He just came just to give me that message. That message. So that's when I knew God was was working in my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I started just going more to church and bumping into people. And then I bought a house, uh, put me right next, became like one of the best friends of Pastor Keon Henderson, uh, the Lighthouse Church in Houston. And then my other pastor that was on the phone when I got shot with uh, Pastor Brian Murray. And that's in Houston you got shot? Mm-hmm. And put me right in between both pastors. All the house didn't know they was both right there, which was my minister. Put me in the middle of them, and then like a month later, me Bishop Jake, he he tell me something. Called me, said, man, you know you're Moses. Called me about the blue in the middle of church, like eight thousand people. So I said, man, God doing something with me. <laughs> I don't know what yeah, it was. Yeah, even yeah. even how me and Larry became like brothers. That was all God. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's just it's just God taking me in places. Everything that, we do every day is because of Him. Yeah. If you get up to breathe, yeah. it's because of Him. 
So he, he sure. ordered my steps. Yeah. Been doing this company three years. Got both of my artists signed to cash money. They say you can't get deals without having numbers and nothing like that. I can't say that because I got a deal with two artists without numbers. Signed to a major universal, signed to everything, you know. We're going to get into that. I want to I want to talk with Tohi. One thing a little I want to commend too. you for, and I, I love the fact that you always mention God in every time whenever you speak. I've been watching a lot of your interviews, and I, I, I commend you about that because, as I said, he's the reason for everything. Yeah. So keep that up. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So as a man thinking his heart, so is he. Um, uh, that's that you gotta you gotta understand what your path is and your purpose. Whatever you thinking, that's where you gonna go with it. Yes. And whatever you speak will become something that you create. You gotta be careful what you say. Um, Toheed, what's up, man? What's going on, my guy? I mean, you singing and everything. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you a singer? I'm a singer. I'm a but rapper. you trying to rap? I'm trying to. Nah, <laughs> he said I'm trying. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, I want to know what's going on. How you? I mean, you Chris <laughs> Brown or something? Right? Nah, man, I'm Toheed. I'm just trying to understand what's going on, baby. Talk you know what I'm saying? Talk so, right how did you end up? Where are you from originally? I'm originally from Queens, New York. Oh, man. I can hear the accent. Up. Queens, New York. Queens. Yeah, you it's like still that? there because my family keep it on me. You like okay. that old pizza they got out there? <laughs> pizza, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, y'all yeah. ain't got. I like uh -uh. a beef there we go. I knew, Let I me tell you something. Up. I knew he she set me up because okay. he loved up. New York she pizza. I love mm -hmm. Chicago pizza. I love my oh. deep dish. I just, okay. I was throwing you the live pass. We get down up there nah, with that pizza. So, so what? Um, what part are you from? I'm from Queens. Queens. Yeah, south side. Where, where, uh, uh, uh. Hakeem went to get his wife on coming to America. You can't miss me. You, you can't miss me. I know That's where right. he went. So let me ask you this. So okay. in Queens, they you yeah, them boys You've rap been to up Queens. there, man. Yeah. Oh, I know I've been to Queens been to a few Queens. times. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I, them boys rapping up there. Yeah, that my see I was young. I was young when I left. Okay, was, how old was, was you? I had to be like six, seven. But uh me and my family we, we all Y'all go back heavy. Like yeah, baby, I still got family up there now, cousins, uncles, all them still up there. Yeah, so I mean, do, do you, you miss it? It's home. <laughs> Nigga, it's you home. know you can't stay too small. You done yeah. been exposed to too much other stuff, bro. It's, it's hard for here. me in New York now. It's too much out here, boy. It's hard. It's I, home though. No. <laughs> them room, boy, they, they build up. See, <laughs> yeah. and they, they so don't small. build out. Yeah, I can't deal they with. It. I'm from Texas, man. Nah, that's for real. But I go up there and visit though. They got some nice offices. They got some, they got some, nice, <laughs> some stuff out there, but yeah. we was down there. When I was down there, I'm the youngest of, okay. seven, of 17. Of, wow. Yeah, Papa Roland. That boy say 17. How many boys? How many, seven, hold boy, on, you said 17 or 17? 17. 17. Ooh, I didn't hear the Brothers teen part. That nigga say 17, yeah. that young nigga got And you are the youngest? I'm the baby. Wow. Wow, how old is the oldest? Ooh, he up there, he probably like 42. Damn, no, nigga. No, hey, 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 hey. Don't make like it sound like that. No, no, no. We dead. Like, it's it's like, it's like, 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 we dead. 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 That nigga put us in the old folks on right there. We don't want that discount uh -huh. yet. <laughs> he way up there. No, like, what I meant was, he 40. About 40. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. No, he, he, I mean, you, you know, um, just just to, to be then came, how did you how do you like being with, uh, is it uh, Seven Kings? Yeah. Mm. How do you like being with this label? Don't be scared to say no, your piece because he's sitting there. No, and let long, me know what you feel. how long have you been with the label? I've been there, what? We've been like three? Two, two, two and a half. Two and a half, yeah. Uh, you ain't wanna, he ain't shelf you, did he? Nah. I'm just nah, saying, yeah, I'm trying to. Nah, <laughs> we there, we there. <laughs> but before you talk, before you say um, how you like it, I mm -hmm. wanna know how did it happen? And mm -hmm. before that even happened, I wanna know when mm -hmm. did you build your confidence in knowing that you can sing? that you have an, a talent. I wanna know right. when that happened and stuff. All right, so I'm not gonna lie. I was a little cocky growing up. Oh, you've always been that I've way. I'm a little cocky. But okay. I just, I'm a whiz kid when it comes to music. I like sound, sonics, all that stuff. It's, I, I love that. Like I self-taught myself how to play piano in third grade. So I just been like. Are heavy. you like really good at the piano? Yeah. Like, okay. It's just like, I don't know, I just love music. So I always had a You ever heard of Ty Harris? Ty Harris, nah. Look him up. For sure. Look him up. You gonna you gonna like what you see. Okay. He get down, and uh, he on tour with Snoop right now. Yeah. Okay. He's serious. He was just on here. He ain't playing no game. So with yeah. that piano, he does. You copy, oh, he you copy. With I want, I want. Yeah, they come yeah. got him. He ain't been back since. Here. <laughs> <laughs> and he from Dallas. Yeah, he from the D. Okay. 
But, but I definitely want you to look him up. But because nah, sure. you said that piano, interested. that's what y'all yeah. and you and you know music, so and, mm -hmm. and y'all younger. So what y'all do with it is a little different than what yeah. what uh, your elders would people this party. <laughs> 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 you know, hell, we can't get out like y'all. You know? <laughs> but no, like like so, your music and your sound. I mean, you you sing with the you you got the auto tune thing going. Nah. Okay, let me hear something then. Yeah, acapella. <clears throat> Trying to think. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Go on, give it to him, man. Let him know what he's hitting for. All right, this is what came to my head. She said, Baby, I'm afraid to fall in love. Because what if it's not reciprocated? I don't know. Sound like that. Sound All like right, that. man. Yeah, you can't just tease me like yeah, that. Okay. She don't play, man. I knew you, you were gonna stop. That. You yeah, can't do yeah, that. You can't do that. Said I knew you was gonna stop. <laughs> you sound good though, nah, man. Nah, I'm gonna no, yeah, more. Sound... As, as we go. As yeah, we go. yeah. I mean, you know, the thing I, I, I like is the fact that you can do it both ways. Cause there's nothing yeah. wrong with auto tune, as long as you don't just, yeah. you know, do it. Get your key to right. death, right? Yeah, just get your you key right. Yeah, what you think? You you the you the owner of the company? You you know like. Like I told her, like she said, how I even met Tohi. I was in Atlanta. Uh, somebody, another artist that wanted me to sign him. And Tohi was there helping him set up his video shoot. And they played a song on the radio. I was like, who was that? They said, a little kid that's skating on the skateboard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, I want to sign him. I forgot all about the other guy. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And then I just seen some men. I just seen how he was just on that skateboard, putting up, helping the other guy. Work so, ethic, so, so I, huh? Work ethic. Yes, I seen it, and he was humble. Yeah, but I knew he was talented. You know, what I'm saying he Pretty just sure. still, he still, you know, finding his his way. And then uh, I say, I want to sign him. So I talked to him, and uh, I say, yo, I don't know what you got going on, but send me some of your music. So he sent me some music, and maybe like a two weeks later, I called him up. I say, man, you never heard it still called South by what is it? South by South, South by West. South West. Yeah. I didn't even know nothing about it. Cause I just started my company. And I had another artist called Young Al. And so I was doing a run with him. And uh, Baby knew had told me, like, come out here, go do this South by South with Big Daddy and then, like, introduce me to him. So I went out there. First time really with him, I flew him out there. And we just vibed. That, that first day we sat in, in, uh, in the SUV and just listened to his music. And all he was doing then was just really just straight singing. Just like how he doing now. He didn't want to do no singing rap. He didn't want to do that, but I have an ear. And I like, I just got this gift. I can say, I think he bigger than just singing rap. Cause like, I mean, just singing. Mm -hmm. Because to break an artist singing, it's not like it was 20 years ago. So, you know, I just got a whim, just got him. So when we signed, I just said, man, just find your sound. Keep singing, keep doing, keep doing, you're doing, you know, and then eventually gonna have. And then maybe one day they call us to come to uh, Miami. That's why I met Slim and Baby and all them. They, they, they Drake. They say, man, you got some right there. You got a Drake and a Wayne right there. He said, I ain't telling you nothing. I'm telling you, I, I discovered both of them. Yeah, because versatility is key. You can't just stick to one thing. Because even in the industry right now, if you look at industry back then, it w mm -hmm. you were only like a singer or rapper. Now you have to be a total brand, a total oh, artist. Right. You got to know the business. You got to know everything. If you don't, you slipping. Right. Yeah, you say Slim. Let's get back to that. So you flew down there. You just flew down to Slim. You just pull up. <laughs> Give me the address, nigga. I'll fly down there and just roll up on them. Tell us the real in-depth detail. What you doing over at their house? Why you at their office? How you end up doing that? You know what I'm saying? We need to really understand. Like, like I, I, I heard Slim... A book that he had spoke on, I read, and it was a good, real good book, Secret Minds of a Millionaire yeah. uh, by T. Harv Ecker. And I, I took that book and I read it for year after year and even had my kids to read it because it was very a very good book. And I didn't hear from him much, but when I heard him say that book, it made me go and research because he said he had read it while he was on a flight. Yeah. So, you know, it's stuff like that. And he's been a, I'm a real big bird man, slim uh, I'm a big fan, like, I don't play with that. You can't oh, yeah. talk to me about nothing going on on the East Coast. See, I looked over there on the West Coast or none of that. When it's down South, it's, it's Birdman and Slim and Jay Prince. So all I'm saying is, 
tell me about what happened because I, I, I had to raise the shun and I, you remember I broke mm -hmm. him down. I want to hear what happened up there at the breakfast club when y'all fell out and you was in there with Bird, man. He was in there with him. Yeah. When I interviewed him, I got the goods on that. Yeah. Now I got you here. I want to hear about, <laughs> you ain't got to give me the address. No, you know what I'm talking about? But, <laughs> <laughs> but just let me know how you guys came together. So uh, when, the, when the big dog, when the big dog called me, uh, how I first even got him, I went to Universal and I was in New York. Uh, my, uh, we had Young Al, my first artist. So we had a uh, sit down situation with Universal in New York. And you know, Republic Records and Universal, that's cash money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Of Nobody. course. That's why they got that $30 million deal. Yeah. I, I, I was down in New Orleans last weekend and I was uh, interviewing Kale and Mac and all of them yeah. and the lady who sent uh, BG's uh, music to Universal. Uh, What's her name? Sharani? What was her name? Mm -hmm. Sharani. She's she owns Peach's record store and I interviewed her. Yeah. And she that Birdman and she talked about them having one all of them being in the same car driving to the record store when they yeah. first started. So I definitely understand that their culturistic ways and the way they came, you know, with yeah. it is, is very important to what happened with the music in the South, you know? Yeah. So how I got to Slim is uh, when, you know, I, this is about the smallest I've ever been. Okay. With Entourage. Because when I bring my brother Larry, Larry don't like a lot of people around. Uh, he like me. Uh, me and Larry yeah. about the same. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. so he got moved in a comfort zone. Yeah. So, but so you, how many people you normally have with you when you normally move? Like 15. Yeah. yeah. He been shot. <laughs> <laughs> he almost like he remind me remind me of PGF Short when he came down yeah, here. He, he had a whole like, movement oh, with him. Yeah. Like. Yeah. yeah, that's what we on. We on a movement. Yeah, mm -hmm. and because you you really that makes that gives it a look too. Yeah. Because when you're recording and stuff, it's very smart. Yeah. It's very good yeah. marketing. I get it. Yeah. He did music videos yeah. with the whole thing that yeah. he did. And you know, so you know, and I'm affiliated with a lot of people. So okay. when you move in different places, they got to know the presence is there. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I move, I know, uh, move like the military, you know, so yeah. I'm very militant. You know, I got a lot of ties to Chicago, so a lot of my affiliations, we move militant. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's just how I move. And so when I went to uh, Universal, we were like 15 deep. They well, said wait, wait a minute. See, that's when you when I went to Universal. It don't just happen like that. <laughs> you don't just go to Universal, bro. It's a reason why you ended up at oh. Universal. You don't. I walk in people meetings with millions of dollars. You know, I can walk in. I got friends. Mm -hmm. Well, I can walk in in Texas, mm -hmm. and I walk in there. I know they millioned up, and I know we in the midst of. But everybody can't like he can't go in. <laughs> they don't know him. Yeah, I but you gotta understand. See, I've been on the same. Uh, I've been, I, I'm an engineer for a company, mm -hmm. so I can go in certain offices because I built the whole city and all. Die, you know, I know stuff yeah. people don't know. But everybody can't go there. Everybody can't go to Universal. That's all I'm saying. So Tell us how you ended up there. You you really want to hear the truth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I signed an artist that already had a buzz called Jungle Freestyle. Okay. So. I'm a type of person that I research and I study everything. So I had researched the movement with Jay Prince did. I researched the movement with Slim did. I researched the movement that Damon Dash did. And I put it all together and I got in the closet and I prayed. When I was on the star of Seven Kings. Okay. That's why the, the number seven is very prophetic. So I prayed. I said, when I start this concrete, the LLC, me and my sister, I didn't want God to manifest it. So I signed the artist not knowing that within like 40 days later, that I'd be getting a call from Universal. All right, 40 now. days. That's just like, when you said 40 days, can you think of 40 days, 40 nights? Yeah. <laughs> so I got a call, and they were like, who? Universal wants to come there. They were like, for real? Everybody like couldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. And so we got on the plane. I flew like 15 of us out there. And we went up there. And when I went, I make everybody, we be dressing. Hey, everybody be saying, saying this, saying that. Which a lot of them in the beginning wanted to have their own swag. But yeah. You know, this, I know. This is what we doing. I know what they do. You know what I'm saying? So when we went to the university, one of the, one of the Jewish guys came out and was like, hey, what's the name of your company? I say, Seven Kings. He said, okay, y'all have a meeting on the seventh floor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so seventh floor, if you know anything about university, that's where the chicks get wrote. That's where, that's where the big the big stuff go on. But they didn't write me no check that day. <laughs> so, I, you know, when I got that, I just found that out recently. When you get to the seventh floor, you kind of made it right. up there. And so when I got there, they were like, man, you remind us of the old cash money. Mm -hmm. So about 30, 30 days later from that, I just seen my Instagram. I started seeing like Birdman liking this stuff on my Instagram. 
And so I was like, okay, somebody talking. Mm-hmm. But not yeah. only that, because whenever y'all moved in that group, everybody was outfitted in the same outfits as well, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So it made an image. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the image you want. You yeah. want to move right. in the same outfits. Yeah. You want to be in sequence. That yeah. is definitely structure. And so uh, I knew right then that they were watching us. And then uh, my jeweler, I was buying some jewelry from a guy named Chris the Jeweler. And so we went to Mississippi, take him on a media run to the radio station. I stopped and bought a chain while I was there. He said, bro, I'm pretty much some shit like this with baby. I said, you got a line on him? He said, yeah, I can call him up. So he hit. Stunner right there. Mm-hmm. And he said, man, this guy here moving like you, bro. You know what I'm saying? He said, yeah. He said, yeah, I heard about him. He was in Universal a couple weeks ago. So, boom. I knew, you know what I'm saying? Right. That People word, talking. They talking. You in know, the right so, circles. Yeah. And so uh, he said, man, come out there. He said, man, you know, I like that little kid or uh, young guy. In the time, they didn't even know nothing about Tohi. Mm. They ain't know nothing about GSO Fat. They know nothing about nothing. And you already had all of them at the same time. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so I went up there based off the deal for Young Al. And so I brought GSO Fat. Tohi didn't even come with me at this time. So I brought GSO Fat and Al to Miami. And then uh, we went to like this bed, no, one of these, I forgot one of them hotels, but one of the more five star hotels. Man. And before I knew, I seen like both Range Rovers pull up, Maybachs, and I was like, so just pulled up. I'm like, I don't know what, the, who is this here pulling up? But they come in like the King prison. Joffrey Jofa. <laughs> you know was in Queens? Why would you? Miami. <laughs> Miami. We was in Miami. Yeah. And, uh, so they sent this other like, a A-R- Rab guy come out talk to me and say, Slim finna come out and talk to you. And this and this and that. And then, uh, so when Slim got out, he just came to me and said, man, I like you. He just got the car, came straight up to me. So I like you. He did his research on you already. And, and then he was like, he said, man, I, my hair stand up on me when I get next to you. He said, you got a, you got a holy side to you. Yeah. That's what he told me. That's I'm real. Like, I was looking at him like, I don't really know nothing about me, but he was hitting me on the money. He said, you got a good heart. He said, where the heart is it? I said, hey, yo, stay. So I called him to come down, and he know Fat was like 18 at the time, so he come out bad, smoking. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he embarrassed me. You know what I'm <laughs> so... He walked straight. He walked straight up to him and just uh and just tell him, tell him straight up that uh man, I've been liking you. You know, little young kid, I've been liking you. You the man. This, 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 this. And then uh he just told him, say, look, I don't know what y'all doing, but y'all need to listen to to your big homie right here. He said we're gonna get the paperwork done tomorrow. I ain't heard my music. I ain't said. I swear. He said we're gonna get the paperwork done tomorrow. He said I'm gonna sign. He said man, y'all got good energy. He say, you know, you doing something big. He said, I ain't seen this before. And then uh, the next day, that when the pandemic hit. Yeah. The pandemic hit. And when, it, you know, we was heading back. I think Fatty caught the COVID because we was we on the plane, getting the head back. He was throwing up. The mm. people from the kickers off the plane. And I was like, <laughs> I was so nervous. And then, uh, so I called. He said, man, y'all just keep working because the lawyers and them, they, they tied up. So we just keep working. So I kept on working even during the pandemic. And then when the pandemic was kind of slowing down, they called me back up to uh, Miami. Matter of fact, I, I called you. Right. I said, they sent me the paperwork. What you, I asked, I, I called mm-hmm. everybody in the room. I said, look at the deal, get lawyers, look at it. What y'all want to do? You know what I'm saying? Everybody like, man, whatever you say, man, you the leader, whatever you say, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's real. So Fat like say, shit, I'm from Mississippi. I ain't got nothing to do. Shit, sign that money. <laughs> fat signed it, didn't read it, didn't take nobody. <laughs> that nigga <laughs> walked by faith right there. That nigga walked by faith. He say, man, I was in juvenile. What you talking about? I'm finna sign the cash runs. Yeah, 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 yeah. he signed it, he man. Didn't, he didn't even look at it. I swear he I didn't. I can't blame him. <laughs> look, when you ain't got nothing, nothing from nothing, leave nothing, man. <laughs> so he he's, honest, he's he, trusting that you have yeah. his best interest yeah. at heart, so he yeah. know you gonna check it. Over. Yeah, he signed it and walked out the room and left. Didn't look at it, didn't nothing. I was like, this nigga crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so told he was kind of like, I'm gonna take it home and let and me think about it. it. Let me play on it and read. No, that's how told he is. Even New York and Mama in New York, <laughs> they think they can read all that real and, and so, I, <laughs> so I had sent fat paperwork way to them, express mailed it to uh, Stone. And then they were like, hey, what's up with, they were asking me, what, oh, yeah. like, what's up with the little Drake, man? What's up with him? I said, he had to get his attorney to look Low. over and stuff like that, which I just fabricated. I just know he, he type person. He, he gonna, gonna look over it. Himself. Yeah. Yo, you, you picked him no, out. Yeah. So he looked right. over it and then he came back. He had script scratch, had all what he wanted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He already checked it out. <laughs> yeah. Change this right here, edit that. I'm good right there. Yeah. And so, and so my sister's like, I think that might be an insult 
for a person to just give you a deal, a multi million dollar deal, and, and you know, you don't have no numbers and you ain't doing it. They just really giving you this deal based off what they believe in. Yeah. Because they ain't giving out deals and money like this if you ain't got the numbers, if you ain't got a following, you ain't got this. So then Toby Lee, he said, Well, she do got a point. I said, so what you gonna do? He like, man, whatever you say. I said, man, just sign this stuff. We good. Yeah. I said, God By got faith. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we signed it, and then maybe like a few months later, they flew. They had this universe had this big thing at, in Miami where they all the artists, new artists that they signed. They had to perform and do a lot of this stuff, and we just been moving and grinding ever since then. And I be back and forth. Like I talked to Stump. I mean, I talked me and Slim like that, and Fat and and Baby talk. They do their thing, and I'm more be with on the business side, handling the business. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Let them do what they do, and so he he kind of like grooming me on a lot of this stuff. And so man, you know, you know it, it, to be able to have somebody like that to to because most people be talking about Birdman and all this other stuff, but the niggas that they talking about, they messed out of money and all that millionaires. I've always noticed that. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, man, let them mess over E one time. You know what I'm saying? I I sign it. Uh, get me some paperwork, fat. <laughs> <laughs> and I show you, I'm gonna sign it. <laughs> no, but you know the thing, you you blessed to even be able to be in those circles, at the universal deal and all the stuff that's going on. Cause you know music for me, a lot of people that and shout out to our deal, a lot of people ain't making no money in this music, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and that's something that he he, he put me up on game on. A lot of people just mm -hmm. talking, they ain't moving in, with precision and making a whole bunch of money. Yeah. A lot of people fluffing this up. They love to dance around on Instagram. The girls working in the niggas line yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. <laughs> so I mean you know to even be able to have something structured and to have something to where it's lucrative mm -hmm. is a big deal for me yes, in this day and time yes sir am I right yeah to put you in a position where you can yeah. be able to better provide for your family and do some things and generational yeah. wealth right man I'm doing movies and everything yeah man. yeah so you uh, you already got script because you out. got a film company yeah I got a film we just shot out. I mean if you're from Texas you heard uh, Dirty Third Dirty third. No, that's I, what that's what Rick Shaw, DJ Screw. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, so I just man, D Rick partnered up and did um, you know, they just did the new DJ Screw move. Yeah, so I he, heard about that. He doing um, uh, we came in partnered up and I'm doing uh, it's called the Dirty Third Next Generation. Yeah, and so uh, that's big. You know, that's 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 like a Texas culture, like mm -hmm. DJ Screw and all that. So we just redid the the second part of that, with third part of that movie. You uh, know, so I started the filming coming because I know God. He gonna do the rest. Man, you take one step, he'll take more man, than two. Really? So I know, I know the airways. A lot of people lost. So I be want to be that voice to tell people it's okay. Uh, you know, isn't it's not wrong being spiritual and still have a little hood in you. It's not. You gotta have I'm, balance. I'm man. gonna ask you something yeah. because I noticed you. You always, you've always seemed to be a boss, and you've always seemed like you're trying to help people. You love to help people. Who was the person who helped you when you were younger? Who was that person yeah. who? Was that leader, that boss to you? Can, can I be honest with you? Yes. Ain't nobody helped me but God. Even as a child? As a child. I've been through some stuff. I've been rejected. That's the, the whole purpose of me signing Seven Kings. I like to go get the people. You see, you can't. You, You're the God, only boy. Huh? You're the only boy because I hear you talking about sisters. No, my bro, I got a brother. My brother, he the Marine. He, he know, he, well, he, he, he a okay. from the military. He in Colleen. And my sister's a doctor. Okay. But I was the rejected stone. I was the one that in doing things that supposed to be in life. You know what I'm saying? I, I was out there. And so. Uh, yeah, because you talk about in an interview that you was paying everybody bills at 10. Yeah, I bought my car at 12. Yeah. How? How? Man, I was a hustler. Nigga in them streets, man. At 12, carry the one. Hell, that was in 95, 96. That nigga was selling dope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a connection. No, because I know the era. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I was a connection there. Okay. Yeah. I believe in. It had to be some drugs involved in the '90s. Yeah, I was a connection there. I was a connection there. But I love the way how you turn everything around to be the person that you are today, because that's the thing I could never understand. I see a lot of these young kids, even artists, who are still in the streets doing stuff. And I'm like, you have a talent. If you can multitask and really run a business, because that's what you're doing, yeah. why not turn that business into a legal business and run that as well the same it, way? But they, they're like... They take people like Boss Talk, OGs, to come in and better to, well, to, to give them that, 
that vision to say, hey, you can go this route. Man, listen, man. That's exactly what it is. You know, I talk about dope and all that, but I stopped drinking, smoking, and everything in 94, 90, 95. But that's the problem with people. You know, people don't understand that that you can make it. And, and so you have to be, really, you can't tell them. You got to show them. I'm, I'm living proof, you, you know what I'm saying, that people can change. You can't make up excuses and say, well, you can't do it. You got to want it, too. So it takes some sacrificing. But yeah. it's the anointing most of all for me. I believe in God. So at the end of the day, I feel like God had a purpose and plan for my life. That's why I sit on this side of the seat now. But even before now, I was always taking the kids and everybody uh, up to Vegas, Cali, uh, everywhere. She know I was spending our money. She was with me. We've been married for 20 years. I took people everywhere. Yeah. I took them to Chicago. We went mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. Take We take people everywhere on our own dime. We never got nothing really in return, but we got it because it came from the heart. heart. We yeah. got it from God. Yeah. So that's the whole game with me. And that's why I sit back here like I do and talk to y'all like I do yeah. because I know already if you if God got you in a leadership role and you got these people's lives in your hand, really, God ain't did that. He, ain't, he wouldn't have let it happen if you weren't ready for it, brother. Yeah. And yeah. for the type of business you know that you, you've always been an entrepreneur, <laughs> really? so you could have chosen any other career to start a business in. Why the music industry? Because in the music, it's a lot of rejected people that try and tell their story, they tell them all. That's it. It's, the, most of them got depression. Most of them don't know what they want to do in life because to go into a boot and create something like that, something not right with you right there. So you got to give them direction. If you ever know every artist, they need direction. Because it's counseling. When I look on it, it's counseling. They're relieving every, all the stress, all the every, anger, all the everything into their music. And so yeah. I want to be that person to tell them, like, you know, like, it's okay going in tough, but let me tell you this, too. Mm -hmm. No, God is the, is the source of all this. I love that. So some people be tempted on that. And then, you know, I'm certified. So when they do that research, if I go, I go in the room with a bunch of killers. I walk in, they gonna get in line, like, okay, well, you know, it's, you, they know, you know. Like, I love that. The old saying, if you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I got a lot, a lot of, lot of respect. And I heard you said um, that you actually went to, to family with Eve. Yeah. So, um, are y'all still close? No, she was, uh, she was talking She married them. a billionaire. I yeah, know. Yeah, so, yeah. she ain't close and to him. just had yeah. a baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, that was, that, that's when she was, uh, you know, she was popping it for pimp back then. You know, mm -hmm. like yeah. she was on on the pole back then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's before she got the paws on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she just got one paw right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. No, no, I'm just saying, man. I, I get it, man. You come up with these people. God got your own paths, man. Everybody yeah. got their path. Yeah. They got to go through. Yeah. But that's a good plug, though, that, that y'all did come up in during the same era yeah. like that mm -hmm. in some of the same places, right? Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's just an honor and a pleasure, man, for you guys to come sit down. I got to ask y'all something, though, before you go. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Any genre. Any genre. Any genre? Any, Any genre. genre. There it is right there. LD, be quiet. Let's go. You <laughs> know the show. <laughs> number one. Number one for me. I don't have Be thinking. You got to have a number one. A number one? Oh, man. Uh, come on. Man, you can change it tomorrow, but no. today I need it. Number <laughs> one. Can, can you Man, I, I'm gonna say in my time, I'm gonna say Prince. Already, okay. you know, Prince played 27 mm -hmm. instruments, man. Yeah. Number two, Michael Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be Michael Jackson in the building every time. Number three, number three. Uh, I'm gonna say Tupac. Tupac. I love you, top three. I had a list. Yeah, that was a solid. That list. was a solid list. Mm -hmm. I, 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 solid that was a solid, list. solid. What's your list. top three? I was gonna say MJ first. Okay, okay. okay. I was gonna say Biggie second. Okay. okay. I ain't have one for the third. Keep well, you gotta get it. Give us a third. I mean, whew. Sheesh. And you only said Biggie because you New York. Yeah. <laughs> Where Brooklyn at? <laughs> God. Come on, you gotta I pick got something. I got me You gotta give me you one. Gotta get right, off the top, boom. Any genre. Oh, Beyonce. Boom. Okay. That boy love Beyonce. Yeah, that boy, okay. that boy Beyonce. love Beyonce. Can't be mad at you so hard. Man, <laughs> yeah. say man, um, just like uh how can people get a hold of you if they trying to, you know, uh, uh link up with y'all? Cause yeah. you know, you know they gotta work, of course. Yeah. But yeah. if they trying to do something for God, maybe you never know what this could bring. So how would man. they get a hold of you? Man, best way to meet social media is uh Seven Kings E N T. That's my Instagram and my web my website is uh Seven Kings spelled out S E. V K I N G. -E Can anybody reach out to you? Like, if somebody, um, like an artist out there and they love your movement and they would like to join your movement, can they just reach out to you? 
I'm always open. I'm a pastor before anything. Okay. What about you? My uh, Instagram is uh, I love Tohi. I love T O W H I D. And then you can go straight to the uh, Seven Kings uh, Instagram as well. Man. What happened to your old Instagram? Because when I was looking at, I found another Instagram. Like, okay, did they take Man, your Instagram or something? I don't. I went through like three Instagrams. I ain't gonna lie. Why? What happened? They took it. Why? Did the first one got took. The second one. I don't even know what happened to the second one. <laughs> It took itself. Wow. <laughs> sometimes I had to get on because sometimes you know these kids <laughs> they're supposed to do some stuff and they fail to realize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But a hey, social media is sending people to jail. Let me they tell watch you exactly. I done opened studios up for certain people in this city. And uh you remember mm -hmm. I put a budget up, open it up, that I, I I give it to them. Got them a booth in there. Got them a, a foot, what photography studio in there. A cap store with my son. All this going on. Get up at twelve at night. They point the gun at the camera. You see it on Instagram. I give them a call. They know what I'm calling for. Yeah, bro. What is y'all doing out here, <laughs> man? It just it seemed like I ain't know them cats, and they came, and I want them to know I had the gun, whatever. I so I just showed it, you know. Don't do that, bro. If yeah. you feel uncomfortable, call somebody or get somebody up there with you. But don't. Mm -hmm. you, this is the kind of stuff that happens when you when God got you in a position where you dealing with people's lives, bro. Yeah. So you get you gotta be there for these kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like I said, I wasn't doing it because I wanted to be no manager. I don't know nothing about the. I love music, but I just did it just because you keep people out of trouble when you put them in the right setting and you yeah. keep them in the right places. Right. You taking up taking up time with them, I'm trying to give them direction. Where Correct. It won't, won't lead them. To that I call it that that wide road destruction. Yeah, yeah. that wide mm -hmm. road is real. Yeah. But I could never understand why people did that anyway. Because to me, the most dangerous person is the person who's not doing all of that. Who you'll never see them do that. Yeah. Compared to the people who show it and stuff like that, they're really not going to do nothing anyway. The ones who show it. Yeah. Yeah, you can scare him in a corner. Yeah. He'll have to do it. I, we just yeah. had that, we, we just had you can that scare a nigga. And he'll do it. Yeah. We had that conversation at the other interview. Like I said, people just. Pointing that gun and doing mm -hmm. it all the time. When you get in the big house, you don't have that gun. No. Mm -hmm. You know. They that, quiet in there. That little 170 pound person that was around here popping that gun. You ain't gonna, what you gonna do when D boy come around you? That's real. Can't do nothing. Like, what, real. What, what you gonna do? And you first hit the yard and you ain't got a tool. You're right. You're right, <laughs> man. Man, you got the best spirit, man. I, you're a very humble brother, man. I thank God for you coming on Boss thank Talk you. 101, where the bosses talk. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And just, just man, keep doing what you're doing, man. If you're ever in Texas again, or if you're, you know, uh, in Dallas, Texas, yeah. or if I'm down in Houston, because I come down there. I was just down there here a few times here re lately. Uh, I, I holler at y'all, man. Hey, like, hey, like I said, no, we appreciate y'all. And I like sure. to tell everybody, I don't leave nobody sure. telling that I love y'all. Man, come on, that's me. They you say I'm lying, but I tell that's that's that. Don't we do that's it? That's what we always don't do. Don't we do it every time? Ain't nobody said that seat that we didn't love, man, because God brought you to us. You know what I'm saying? And at that point, why not? You know what I'm saying? We yeah. here now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Thank you guys for coming on the Appreciate show, man. You for having us. Man, anytime, man. Hey, man, yeah. it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out.